But it's all topical again this past week with the focus again on a feasibility study to restore the Hill of Hoth tramway. A tram service which climbed the Hill of Hoth in North County Dublin in the first half of the 20th century and indeed outlived the Dublin tram system by about an extra 10 years. The original trams themselves have been preserved by the Hoth Transport Museum and Jim Kilroy is among the supporters of a reopening of the tram service if the initial cost of infrastructure could be justified. All of this has prompted us to go back to the 1959 archives when the line closed. On City Newsreel, John Ross initially reported the foreboding at the prospect of closure. The other night in Dublin, the Transport Museum Society held a meeting at which the main item on the agenda of interest to all Dubliners was this burning question of the closing of the Hill of Hope tramway. Now, the Honorary Secretary of the Society, Michael Corcoran, is here in the studio tonight, and I'd like to ask him, what did you decide and what did you talk about? Well, John, the line's main problem at the moment is revenue and we're anxious to see the revenue increased. We also think that it's possible that the tourist authorities could perhaps publicise it more if they had the right information available. And you have that information and are prepared to give it to them? Yes, that's right. And you would cooperate with these other bodies? We're prepared to cooperate with these other bodies to the fullest possible extent, and we would also like, if it's all right with them, to publicise the line ourselves through our contacts abroad. We have many of these. You have all over the world? All over the world. Uh, I might say that we feel that sentiment without any business behind it is a silly thing. And on the other hand, commerce, which excludes sentiment completely, is too hard-headed. We think that on this line there could be got the correct blending of the two things and that they might mean a big difference in revenue in the long run. I know. You've got the, the power note on one side and the pull of the old heart strings on the other. You can put them together on the hill of hope. Exactly. Then when the announcement was made that CIE would phase it out, City Newsreel sought out those with the longest memories. In a very short while, amidst lamentations, the Hill of Hoth tramway will make its last run. On the other day, in the town of Hoth, David Cairns talked with Billy O'Brien, who knows that Hoth tram very well. Billy's record is this. He was, he's now 69 years old, he has spent 49 years in the service of the GNR, of which 25 years were spent on the Hill of Hoth tram, and he remembers the very first one. People, of course, that don't know, think that the first tram that ever went round the hill was an electric tram. Oh, I thought it was. Well, it was. Um, the first mechanically propelled tram that did go round was really an electric tram. But there was one tram that went round the Hill of Hoth before any electric tram ever went around, and that was an old Dublin horse tram yes. that they used for putting up the wires. Oh, I see, yes, prior to having the uh, yes, electric tram. Yes, they used for putting up the wires. And I remember myself as a boy, that old tram used to be tied on the rails down at Hoth Station. And I remember myself and another chum of mine, Cecil Coote, and another fellow, Jack Russell. We all played conductors and drivers on that old car down in the, uh, at the Hoth Railway Station. Did you? We did. Yes. So, when my father was signal man in the signal cabin, and of course he always kept a tight eye on us. I bet he did. See? <laughs> Tell me about the first trip of the electric well, tram. the first then. electric tram that came down, I remember that car very, very well. I was only a boy, I couldn't be much more than about ten years of age or so. Yes. When that car came down. Well, before though they came down, they had to stop the Dublin United trams, you see, it used to run to the East Pier. Yes. You see, well, they had to stop them at Holt Station for to put the bridge up. Oh, yes. See? Well, then I got used to and knew all the conductors in those cars, and they used to let me turn the trolleys for them. Oh. So then when the first hill tram came down, yes. I knew Mr. Bridge that was in charge. He was one of the engineers. Yes. So he said to me when the car stopped, come on, Billy, boy, he says, you can turn the Dublin United Trams trolley. He says, why not turn this one for me here now? So I turned the first trolley on the first car, number four, that ever came down to Holt Station. And when the last tram made its way up the hill of Oath, Joe Linane was on board with his then young assistant, Gay Byrne, producer, recording engineer, balance and control officer. My most enduring memory of Joe dates back to the last week of May 1959. It was a Tuesday morning of the week which saw the end of the Hoth tram. 
I was at that time tape recorder minder for an advertising agency in Dublin, and Joe was the regular host of a sponsored program we did every week for Prescott's Cleaners and Dyers. This was a Tuesday morning, a beautiful, blue-skied, sunny, warm, pet day in May. And no one else, radio-wise, seemed to be doing anything about the end of the whole tram, so we decided to do so. So off we went to Sutton, we got on board, and Joe chatted up the driver. We're told never to speak to the driver, but I'm speaking to the driver of the Hoth tram out here on the platform, not from the back seat, but from the very front seat. Here is the driver whose name is... Tom Redmond. Hello, Tom. How are Tom, you? Tom, we're going nicely now at a good, steady two and a half miles an hour through this cutting. What's the name of this cutting? Kruger's Cutting. Kruger's Cutting. Why was it called Kruger's Cutting? Uh, the Boer War started at the time they were doing the cutting on the Hill of Hoth tramway, making the Hill of Hoth tramway. The Boer War was on at the I time, see. and they got the nickname of Kruger's Cutting. I thought perhaps you had some distinguished passengers and Paul Kruger might have travelled on the tram. That no, is not so. No, no. Well, Tom, will you be sorry to see this? Poor old tram going away on the 31st. Oh, definitely, Mr. Lane. Yes, definitely. I'd be very, very sorry to see it. And uh, my colleagues in question would be very sorry to see you go too because we were a little colony of our own here. I'm quite sure. Yes. Well, Tom, it's magnificent to be out here doing this enormous speed. There we have a passenger. Who's this small Philip getting off? Is it? Hello, Philip. <laughs> That's little Philip. That's isn't right. It? That's right. And I notice he's being left at his own back door. That's true. Not an official stop. That's right. But we won't tell the company about it. Not a word. Good man, Tom. Drive on. Faster, faster. Right, oh. <laughs> that was Joe with driver Tom Redmond on the Hoth tram in May 1959. This was an original recording made for the Prescott sponsored program. Those programmes were 15 minutes in duration and flourished for many years, but ended about half a century ago. This archive recording survived somehow, and it's now in the archives under Joe Lenane's name, as it comes from a tribute programme to Joe Lenane, in which Gay Byrne, who was with him in May 1959, on the journey of that last tram in Hoth, and Gay was holding the portable recording machine and microphone on that occasion. <laughs> That other enduring memory I mentioned to you earlier of that lovely sunny day in May 1959. Joe and I on the open top of the Hill of Hoth tram. We were just coming up to the summit uh, with the blue waters of the bay on our right hand side. And I happened to switch on the tape recorder and I put the microphone into Joe's hand. And right off the top of his head he went into this soliloquy. I'm sitting on top of old number one. The first car that ever ran on the Hoth tramways 58 years ago. And feeling rather nostalgic and sad about the closing of the old Hoth tramway. I'm up here on top on a glorious May day, sitting on my own. There's one small boy, passenger down below, Tom the driver, and Willie the conductor. Rolling along here at a nice, steady pace, approaching the summit. Feeling rather sad, like all the residents from Hoth up to the summit and down to Sutton. Just feeling as sad as they are about the closing of the old Hoth tramway. To my left here, there's the Bailey Lighthouse, a coaster carving its delicious way through a very calm sea. And the prospect in the distance of perhaps a cup of tea or a glass of something at the inn at the top of the summit, which we are now fast approaching. Did I say fast approaching? Slowly approaching, deliciously, charmingly, wonderfully approaching. That is something that Dubliners, Irelanders and foreigners are going to miss in just a few days' time. As one lady said, progress must go on. The Hoth tram has to go. What a pity. But it's pulling to a stop at this moment. There is the inn, lounges, bars written on it, tea rooms, ice creams. Progress has come to the summit, and the old host tram has to go.
the late Joe Lenane on the last journey of the Hill of Hoth tram. We will monitor developments.